Hey guys, it's Tim here at JK Boots, and today we are doing a Q&A. We're gonna be going through some YouTube comments, some Reddit stuff. We're gonna answer as many questions as we possibly can, and hopefully, we'll get some good answers. What is the OT and what is the forefront? Forefront, Richard asks. Well, that is an excellent question, Richard. Um, the OT and Forefront are two boot models that we have. They are some of our best-selling boots. So here is our OT, and then this is our Forefront. Um, this one's cut in half, this one will be half off. But um, we love these models. They are excellent models, they are very similar, however, also very different. We released the OT roughly three years ago, probably two and a half, three years ago. And I actually designed this boot with a firefighter friend and we wanted to create a fire boot that was lighter, more flexible, and wouldn't just be as hard, you know, hiking. It would be like lighter weight, like more hiking boot. And so we took almost everything from our classic kind of logger boot, but with the midsole, we feathered it out right here at the ball of the foot. We feathered out the midsole, and the midsole does not extend all the way to the toe, and instead there's that rubber slip and outsole that extends all the way to the toe. And so what that does is it gives us that right there, which is what we want. And that is just so much more flexible, cuts out weight. We also made it an eight inch top, not a 10 inch top. And we put the 132 sole on it for a lower heel, which is just makes it a little bit easier to jump around, run around type of style. It's super tough, super durable, still made just like the classic handmade PNW stitch down style that we do, but it's much lighter. And I think honestly, it's, I, I love it a lot. I mean, it's, if it's not my number one, it's my number two for sure. The forefront, is very similar build where we do the same thing where we feather out the midsole and it's built the exact same way except the forefront is a six inch top and it's got the wedge sole on it. So this is going after more of that construction, blue collar job, all purpose use. And this is us basically bringing in a very high quality, top notch, thick leather, handmade, leather insole, leather midsole, you know, lined, top-notch, handmade, hand-lasted, stitched through, awesome boot that matches what the kind of common American blue-collar worker wears. And so this is like the primo luxury stuff right here. That is the OT and that is the forefront. Thank you, Richard, for the excellent question. Okay, moving on. Let's see here. Caleb asks, what do you recommend we apply to help protect the outside of the leather midsole? Excellent question, Caleb, thank you. There's a few different schools of thought on this. Um, there's probably going to be a leather enthusiast who corrects me. However, in my experience and what I've seen just by doing this since I was 14 is you don't really need to do anything. The leather midsole is made, it's, it's veg tan backslash oak tan. Those are two different tanning styles, but because of the tanning process, it creates it and makes it so thick and stiff and dense that actually putting oil on it is the antithesis of what you need to do. You do not need to do that. Like here's like a super duty right here. We, I have this in all of our oiling videos and stuff. Like do not oil this area. Do not oil the base. This is the same um, veg tan leather as this is, the midsole and the insole. Do not oil it because this type of leather is not needing oil. It's not asking for oil. It, 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 its point and goal is to remain like stiff and hard. And so when you start oiling it, you're just gonna soften the midsole. It's gonna break down faster. You're gonna cause delamination in between the layers because the oil seeps in and eats the glue away. You're gonna cause just all this, like, you do not need to do it. This is where the correction part comes in that someone would, would say something. I think that if you're really like in nasty, muddy, wet conditions, and you just absolutely like wanna do something or need to do something, any kind of snow seal, heavy, thick grease, a light layer is okay. Like it is permissible, it's okay. I think when you're getting into the liquid oils, and if you're doing it profusely, that becomes a problem. Most of the time, I don't think you ever really need to do anything. I have personally never oiled or greased a midsole or base of any of my personal boots. Um, however, you know, I am mostly in dry conditions. I'm not in a nasty, muddy, wet, you know, conditions at all the time. So if you are, I think the way that you can take care of the leather midsole is with some snow seal or some light, heavy boot grease. Stay away from the liquid oil. So hope that answers your question. Thank you, Caleb. Video team member is telling me to spit through these faster, so I will. So let's see what we got here. Um, Okay, okay, okay. Maulene asks, maybe that's why they're six to $800. I understand keeping the lights on, but they're way too expensive. 
I'd love to see an actual breakdown of true cost and profit margins on these boots. It's got to be pretty damn high. I'm not saying they're not amazing, but I can't have, and that I don't have three pair in my cart on their website. Now, definitely buy a pair. All I'm saying is you can get a good, decent leather boots for half that and get a couple years out of them. That is an excellent statement. It's not really a question, but I'll address it. Um, first of all, our boots are really between 549 to 575. It starts getting into the six, seven, eight hundred dollar range when you start doing customizations and you start going, you know, really a lot of options and things like that. The reason for the cost is there's many factors, but the main reasons are first of all the quality of material. We are purchasing and using very high quality material. I mean, top notch, top tier. Like we don't skimp out, you know, the leather that we use, it's from USA tanneries, the insoles, the midsoles, the USA tanneries, the soles are Vibram soles, the hardware, it's brass hardware. Like the thread we use is a Technora Kevlar fire thread. Like every ounce of all the material that we use on these boots is just like, you can't get better. And that's, that's huge. And so that just compiles, you know, when you start looking at boots that are anywhere from, which most boots are anywhere from 250 to 350, it's lower quality material, it's less material, so that's why the cost is less. Secondly, the process, handmade, it's huge. Uh, you know, we're, we don't have an assembly line of just machine style stuff. It's still very handmade process, so you're depending on craftsmen, you're depending on skilled guys that have careers in this, and this is their, this is their thing. So you're getting such a higher quality product but the value is so much more because whereas you'll wear out something that's 250 in a year, you're not gonna wear these out for multiple years. So it's just a value, it's just a value add. You know, the, the reason they cost more is because they're so much valuable and because you're getting so much more time out of them and they're so much more comfortable. Full leather boot, arch support, high quality, like it does make a difference. So that's to answer the question of cost and why they cost what they do. Let's switch over to Reddit and see what we got on Reddit. I ran through some YouTube comments. Let's see what we got. Okay, uh, Brandon on Reddit saying, help, I'm about one month into breaking in some OTs. When I first got them, I wore them the entire day inside the house. They felt great. All of a sudden, the last two or three days, I've developed a terrible pinky toe rub. It's bothering me, it's killing me. I don't know if it was always there and I just didn't realize it or what, but with this thick ass leather, I don't see it budging very much, but maybe I'm wrong. Did I size wrong and I was screwed? Super bummed right now because I love these boots. Damn. Brandon, excellent question. I can provide some insight and maybe some insight for anybody else who could be dealing with that. So, okay, a leather product is different from a fully synthetic product. So when you've got like a pair of like tennis shoes or something, there's, it's not really made of like, it's maybe a little bit of leather, but it's predominantly like a synthetic material that has just so much a give. And so when you slide your foot in there, even if they don't quite fit right, if there's pinky toe rub, like you won't really feel it because it's synthetic, it's thin, it just warps out. With leather, because it's thick and it's a leather material, I would say you want your boots to be a little bit on the snug side because over a long period of time as you're wearing them day in, day out, leather, it's an organic material, it's gonna shape and mold and kind of move around and break in more to your foot. Something like this where the, the boot fits good everywhere else, but like one or two areas, it's just something that you gotta wear in because you're dealing with a fully leather product where it's gonna mold. And you know, like Bison's a great example. Like there's so much mold and give on the vamp of this boot. Like if you've got your, a little pinky toe issue, like you're gonna wear that in. Like it's going to wear it. Now it might take a little bit of time, but like it's gonna break in. It's gonna stretch out. It's gonna wear in. And that's why we talk about oiling. You know, I, have, I, I always tell people that if you are, if they're a little snug, oil them up, wear them oil them up and wear them. And that's just gonna help the leather loosen up and stretch in and break in. I think that it works so well. I've had thousands of customer interactions where that's the solution and it works really, really well. So that's the, that's the answer for Brandon. Or if you're experiencing that too, if you've got a little bit of like a weird toe rub or something like that, a lot of times too, sometimes the sizing stuff can be almost psychological in, in a sense where it feels tight one day, but then maybe your feet are swollen, you put them on the next day, they feel better. So the, the general answer is always just give it time, let the boots mold, oil them, keep wearing them. In the extreme side, if it's like a sizing issue, that's where it's like, oh my goodness, nothing is changing. It's not only bothersome in one area, it's bothersome in multiple areas. That's where you can come in and say, okay, maybe I gotta get a different size or get a different model. So that's the answer to that question. Thank you, Brandon, for, for posting that, it's really great.
Let's keep going here. Um, someone on Reddit, Regress, asked, um, they oil and grease their boots at least monthly, and then they posted a picture of a little bit of like what looks like some cracking. That's a great, that's a great question. It's a great post. I recommend a regimen of roughly once a month, and once a month can look like four to five weeks, four to six weeks, roughly once a month to oil your boots. I actually tell people to kind of stay away from the grease because I feel that the grease really, it doesn't really soak into the leather as well. It kind of creates this layer over the top of the leather. And again, this is just from seeing guys wear boots for three, four, five years, bringing them back in, repairing them. You know, this is like experience just speaking from seeing so many pairs of boots. And I've seen that the guys who oil their boots as opposed to greasing their boots, it seems like the leather does better and lasts longer. And you don't get this like thick layer of like mud and grime and dust that collects over the top of the boot. Cracking or what looks like cracking oftentimes is not actually the leather cracking, but it's actually that layer of grease and dirt and grime that starts to crack because you know, the boot is constantly being worn and it's constantly being moved. So if you're seeing a little bit of cracking, don't panic. This is okay and this is normal. And in general, leather does wear in, mold, crack, and it'll, you know, it'll do that over time. If it's extreme where you're literally, the leather is actually ripping apart, that's another kind of case and another scenario where either, man, either, wow, either default on the, you know, defect on the leather, which is less likely, but possible, or really over oiled and you just wore them down, or your boots are just three or four years old and they need to rebuild at this point. So cracking or you know cre creasing is normal and it happens. A lot of times it's because of the thickness of the grease over the top, or it's just because you've been wearing your boots for a long time and you're tough on them. So don't worry about that. If you're seeing it, then just kind of dial back on the oiling, dial back on the greasing. I tell people that touch it, feel it. Does it feel oil? Does it feel greased? Then you don't need it this month or this, you know, t this time period. If it feels dry, if it feels stiff, if it feels rough, oil them. So it's a case by case basis based on your environment and what you're doing and how much you're wearing them. It's not a one answer fits all. Let's see what else we got. Let's see, we got time for one more. Someone posted a picture where they asked, um, are these spots from lasting? In the picture you can kind of see these like black dots. Yes, those are spots from lasting. Because our lasts have a metal plate on the bottom of the last, and because we last our boots wet, not dry, which is the correct thing to do because the leather molds and shapes over the last correctly, sometimes it's just literally from the moisture and that metal plate, and the, the a last is built with a metal plate on the bottom. It has these pins that keep that metal plate on there. And so that's just literally that metal pin leaving a, you know, oxidizing mark on the leather insole. Um, it goes away with time. It is not harmful to the boot. It's not harmful to your socks. It doesn't leave stains. It's just there. And so it can look daunting, but that's literally from the last of the boot. And this is a good thing. You would want to see this because that means your boots were made really well. So yeah, there we go. That's that. I think we're good for Q&A for now. We'll do another one later. Thank you guys so much for asking your questions. Please continue to do that. Email us, DM us, comment. Email and phone call are the best way to get a hold of us. But we'd love to answer all your questions. Our customer service team is at your disposal. Thank you guys so much for shopping at JK Boots, watching our videos, wearing our product. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.